could ask about the availability of Leah Williamson, Viv Miedema, Victoria Pullover, Katie McCabe and Amanda Illishta. Okay, so let's take them in, in order then. Who did we start with? Leah Williamson. Leah Williamson, yeah. Yeah, she's progressing really well. Uh, it's obviously um, because it's a muscle injury, uh, we need to be cautious and, and taking every step good. But she is progressing well and she's very much in contention for, uh, for Sunday. The two Dutch players, okay. Emma and Victoria Blover. Yeah, so let's start with the bad news then. That's with uh, Viv Miedema. She is required a minor knee surgery. Um, and uh, that is going to have her off pitch for several weeks. Um, and we will have an update on that after the surgery and when we see how, how she is progressing. Um, and it's better news with, with Vic Palova because she's very much in the same situation as Leah Williamson is that she's progressing really well as well and is very much in contention for Sunday. Katie McCabe? Katie McCabe uh, is also progressing well uh, and she's also very much in contention for Sunday. And Amanda Ilestet? Amanda Ilestet, she's back with us here now, back with the squad, uh, but the game here now on, on Sunday will come too early for her. And can I ask, related to that, Katie Reid was recalled from loan um, at Watford, was that around the injury situation or what was the thinking behind that? Uh, it's a number of reasons to be honest but one of is of course how, how the squad is looking. Then we're looking internally first and, and see um, what, what do we have and we see a category that has been developing really really well in, uh, in Watford and I think the first team experience has been a great thing uh, for her. And we thought this was a great opportunity to have our eyes on her more now as a first team squad player um, and uh, from there on deciding what the next uh, move is for her in her career. And then can I ask about Lena Hertig and whether there's any more clarity on her timelines? Is this potentially season ending? Uh, what's the situation with Lena at the moment? There is not uh, any clarity on it which makes that it's hard to predict uh, when she will be able to, to return to play. Um, so yeah, potentially uh, she won't be returning uh, this season, but we don't know. And finally, I wanted to ask about Caitlin Ford as well. Tony Gustafsson spoke about how he didn't play in the first Matildas game over the break uh, for loading reasons. And I think obviously Lena's injury has had an impact there. and. The fact that Katie's been needed at fullback has probably put more loading on Caitlin Ford as well. Um, I wondered, um, not so much your response to those comments, but the loading of Caitlin. Um, and also, I think a lot of fans are wondering whether Kate, Chloe Lacasse could have been used on the left a bit more to ease some of that, that burden on Caitlin. And just, I guess, your kind of your views on that. Yeah. Well, I think Caitlin was used in the first game against uh, for Australia. She came on, didn't she? I think she played 45 minutes and she played 15 minutes um, against Manchester United. So I think if there was, was any club that was deloading the, the player, it was Arsenal. Uh, she, she played more minutes for Australia uh, than, than, uh, than we did play her in the, in the last game. So... That, that's sometimes the decisions that we need to take as a, as a coach. Um, we know that on the full-back positions and the wide forward positions, we're a little bit light, especially here with the Gold Cup um, and, and the unavailability for, for players because of that. Um, in retrospect, it's always easier to see who, who was going to be able to start and, and what not. But what I think is very pleasing um, when I look at it as how we work together with both players and staff is that we're constantly having these discussions. Um, we're trying to juggle uh, that. It is really important for us to have good availability across the whole season uh, and being smart with our decisions. Um, and I think the decision to not load Caitlin as much against Manchester United was probably a really, really good decision. And it probably enabled her to play more minutes for Australia as well. And sorry, one final one actually about the game on Sunday. Um, we know Spurs might sit back a little bit as they did in the first game and play in a deep block, but we also know 
they're going to pass out from the back as they did in that first game. And I wondered, um, you know, looking back on that first game, I kind of felt not so much with the goal, but I felt there were opportunities maybe to take the ball off Tottenham um, and force those high turnovers that perhaps that didn't work as well on the day. And I wondered whether that's going to be a key aspect of the game on Sunday, that when Tottenham do try and play out from the back, that maybe there's a, there's a chance there for Arsenal. I think so. I think that goal is very much um, shows the the risk and reward in in football. Um, I, I don't think we press aggressively enough in in that moment, so it's, we allow them to to get out. It's probably the only time that they really get out during the whole game. Um, trying to do that, I think we forced them to a lot of turnovers in that game as well. We were not very good at converting from those turnover moments. And, and these things will be important against a very organized team. Um, you will need to take the moments that they are disorganized um, with some real efficiency because it might not happen a lot of times during the games. So you will A, try to force and that happen a few more times, but then making sure that you use them. Uh, because in football, it's always going to be hard to break down an organized team. Uh, so that's going to be one part in, in order to, to do, but then take advantage of the disorganized situations. And we didn't do that well enough in the, in the last game against them, but I think we created quite a lot of disorganized situations. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Mark. Hi, Jonas. You've always spoken about wanting to play at the Emirates Stadium all the time. This will be the second home game in a row. How proud are you that it, it's almost proof that you can sustain that interest given that you're, you're going close to two sellouts back to back? Yeah, I've heard 166 tickets left. Uh, so uh, whoever can rush and be lucky and get the get those last tickets, it, it's incredible. Um, it's it's great. It's it's very much shows that it's not a not a one off. And I mean, it's less than 12 months ago since we sold out the stadium the the first time uh, for the women's team against Wolfsburg in the Champions League semi final, and we. Everyone felt what a huge achievement that was, and now it's about any great football team. We're, we're not only searching for the highs, we're searching for consistency, uh, we're searching for sustainability, we're searching for creating a culture at, at Emirates Stadium, week in, week out, um, and this shows great progress in, in doing so. Um, so I think we now we all need to play our part in that, and especially we as a as a team to to deliver a performance that that match that great support that we get from the from the fans, and I think we can lift each other to new heights. Just on that, and the, the performance levels. I know North London Derby is huge, but when you think you, how they played here against Chelsea and Manchester United, is it is it another case of being pleased with your players that they play the game rather than the occasion? Rather than being at the Emirates Stadium, they play the team that's in front of them. Yeah, but I think we we play the occasion as well, uh, and and we do that to a positive. Uh, I think if you see two scenes ag ago, I don't think we used the crowd very well at at Emirates Stadium. Uh, now we're using the crowd much much better, uh, and the atmosphere is is phenomenal. Um, I think. That's something that, that we can really use as a strength, as a home team, and make that our fortress together with our fans. Uh, and it should be a very unwelcoming place to come as an uh, away team. Uh, and we need to create that with the way that we are playing. Our fans need to create that with their passion and their energy. And if we both can do that, I'm sure we will give ourselves the best chance of a great performance on Sunday. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Um, we'll come to the call now, if there are any hands. Dan. Hi, oh, Jonas. Hope you're well. Um, obviously, we've seen Spurs really kind of improve this season and build on what they're trying to achieve. So, you know, in terms of a derby and a, a local rivalry, you know, how, how good is that for the game and, you know, for North London to, to potentially have two really competitive teams that are going head-to-head, -head, you know, at a, a greater level, if you like, the Spurs building in the future? Uh, yeah, like I think the league is as the most competitive as it's ever been, as I said in the start of the season. Um, I think Spurs as a team, and this is always which glasses you are looking at. If you're looking very short term and you saw Spurs from a pure result perspective last season, 
yes, it's a very improved Spurs, but I think you could also argue that it's probably the same level of Spurs that it was two seasons ago, uh, when, when they were very much one of the teams that were sort of challenging for a, for a top four uh, spot in the league. Um, and, and it's one of those clubs that, that have those uh, those capabilities uh, of doing so. So I would more say that last season was an was an off season for them uh, than that 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 was their actual level. That's brilliant. Thanks, Jonas. That's a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Amy from Goal. Hi, Jonas. Um, I just wanted to ask about obviously Viv started for the Dutch against Spain. What was the communication like with the Dutch team? And you know, were you sort of thinking that she would start? Coming back with needing that surgery. Uh, uh, we, we have a good com communication uh, with all the national teams uh, that we work with, but we also have to have a lot of respect for the autonomy in the decision making. And and Netherlands were playing some really really important games for them, uh, both for a Nations League trophy and maybe more importantly for an Olympic qualification. Uh, and um, they need also need to take the decisions that are best for them. Uh, what is important in all these conversations is that I always think that we put the player in the forefront, uh, and we're trying to find solutions that is the best for the player, um, and we need to cooperate, um, and. This here was not something that was, she, did, she doesn't need a surgery because of those 45 minutes she played against Spain. She would have needed a surgery anyways for it. So it, it was nothing that the Dutch team did that um, complicated this here or made the situation worse. It was a situation that need, was needed to be fixed anyways. And just on that, you've obviously got a couple games coming up with this on Sunday and then the, the Conti Cup semi-final. You know, you've got three players at the Gold Cup, you've got three Australian players who, you know, had at least three long flights this past week. How much of a challenge is it going to be to, to manage the loading but still pick, you know, the right team, the right with the right tactical plan to get the results that you need in these two games? I think the starting point is where you put your focus uh, and we got a lot of practice on that last spring uh, and I am a big believer is that you can either have excuses or you can have results. I don't think you can have both uh, and what you were listing there was a lot of potential excuses uh, and that's not where I put my focus on. Uh, we, we have some really really good players at home that are available and we need to get the most out of them. And yes, it's going to be a push here now. Uh, we're not going to have a situation where we're going to be able to play two different starting lineups uh, in the league and in, in the Conte Cup as we have been used to do this season. It's going to be much, much less rotation uh, between here and it's going to be a higher demand on the players. But we built an organization to deal with that as well. Uh, and we, we build players long term to be able to deal with those situations also. And that's what asked now, and then we step up to deal with it. Thanks, Jonas. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Tom Gary? Uh, good morning, Jonas. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, just wanted to ask if there was any update on Michelle Aguiman, um, because obviously she scored a couple of goals for the nine, under 19s, uh, one of them an amazing goal, and then we had to go home with an injury. I just wondered if, if you know how she's doing and, and whether there's any update. We don't have any specific update yet uh, we don't think it's something that's gonna take her out for a very long time uh, but but she's also gonna be sidelined at least several weeks uh, for it but but hopefully not more than that uh, thank you Jonas. I'm grateful thank you thank you thanks Tom Adam um, hi Jonas as you, as you said there's another big crowd coming this weekend for the North London derby I was wondering what you think Arsenal are doing well in particular for generating these really consistently high crowds because it's become a you know games are constantly at the Emirates there's this real community around it fans are going and rather than it just being the showpiece fixtures like it is with some it's become very well supported every single time so I wonder you know, what you think Arsenal are doing particularly well with that and what others should follow I think one thing that stands out is that the whole club at every level uh, is invested in that. Uh, 
uh, we, we have a club at, at the very top that, that's one of the ambitions is to accelerate the growth of women's football and you can really see how that is influencing uh, every decision um, on its way. I think that is very important um, to, to start with that, to, to make it a real investment. Then I think what makes Arsenal special and the, the belonging in the community and the connection to, to the fans, I think it's one of those things that if you could uh, bottle that uh, and sell it, uh, you probably uh, end up earning a lot of uh, a lot of money on that. But that's the special circumstances and all the history uh, coming together with the community and Arsenal uh, that allows that. And there is where I think that other clubs that they need to find their solution to it. But I think it starts with the whole club being invested. I think that has to be the starting point. And then from there on how you create that feeling, that passion for the team, every club has to, to find their own identity, their own culture. Uh, and that's going to be different for Arsenal than, than for other teams, of course. Uh, thanks, Jens, that's all. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, everyone. We'll leave it there.